Hey guys, so this video is about systems of linear equations for the third time, and this time we're going to use determinants and um, something called uh, Cramer's rule for solving uh, systems of equations. And this is like the zero creativity method. It's it's literally you just set up this um, the thing called a determinant, and it's going to be this sort of defined operation, and we just grind out a bunch of arithmetic, and it spits out these answers. Um, and for me, it's it's kind of hell on earth because it's a sign errors waiting to happen. Um, but some people actually really like this method, and it's really good for programming. So, okay, evaluating a determinant. So this is um, a two by two matrix, or and it could be any square matrix, as we'll see as we go on. Um, the determinant is defined as basically this operation. We go if we have these um, four elements in here. We do the corners, so A times D as they have it labeled, and then we subtract C times B. So that's finding a determinant, again, definition. Um, <clears throat> so we have one right here, so I'll write it all out. So we're gonna go three times negative one, and then minus uh, two times negative five. You certainly don't have to show all these steps, but I'm just trying to show where the pieces land. So this would be negative three, and then minus a negative 10, so negative 3 plus 10. And so D is how I usually abbreviate it. And sometimes, um, like I said, there's a couple of different notations they have up here. There's one that looks like absolute value, um, DET. I usually just use D. Uh, so anyhow, the determinant on this one would be 7. Okay, so then Kramer's rule uses determinants to solve systems. Um, and so basically, if we have something of this form, um, you know, these system of linear equations, two variable ones, um, we can find the determinant, um, we're going to find three determinants. We're going to find d, dx, and dy, and they have it labeled with all these little subscripts in the book. Um, to me, I'm, I'm going to write it and just make it look a little bit simpler visually, and it's not quite as precise, um, but So D is going to be A, B, A, B. So it's these first two um, columns. Um, DX is going to, what happens is the equals column C replaces the X column. So it's going to be C, C, B, B. And then um, DY, it's the same idea, but now the equals column replaces the Y column. So A, A, C, C. Um, so to me, that's easier to look at um, and just kind of see what's happening. So for D, we just chop off the equals. For DX, the equals hops in for X. And for DY, the equals hops in for Y. And then to actually solve the system, we find these three determinants. And then X is going to equal DX over D. And that's what they're showing here. It just makes it feel more complicated, I think, the way they have it written. And then... Um, Oops, y is going to equal dy over d. And so let me show that with an example. Okay, so we're going to solve this using Kramer's rule. So the first thing I'll do is just write this as an augmented matrix, um, just to make it a little bit cleaner to look at. And then I'm going to do d. And you always want to do d first because um, if d happens to be 0, and that means that this is either inconsistent or dependent, and Kramer's rule doesn't um, doesn't solve it. Um, but it does tell you that it doesn't have um, a typical solution. So D, we just we chop off the equals, and so we're just finding the determinant of three, five, negative two, negative five. So three times negative five is going to be negative fifteen minus. Um, and something I always do is I always just write down the minus from the formula, and then whatever comes up, I either use parentheses or not. I find if I write it, I make fewer mistakes. So uh, negative 15 and then minus 5 times negative 2 would be negative 10. So that's negative 15 plus 10. So that will be negative 5 is our D. And then we do DX. And so for that, the 2 and the 10 will hop in for the 3 and the 5. And so 2 times negative 5 is negative 10 minus 10 times negative 2 is negative 20. 
So it looks like um, that would be plus 20, so that is 10. So that is dx, and we'll do dy. So that, uh, 3, 5, and then the 2 and 10 hop in for the y's. So 3 times 10 is 30, minus 5 times 2 is 10, and so that would equal 20, so that was dy. So then once I have those, um, x is going to equal dx over d, which was 10 over negative 5, or negative 2. y is going to equal dy over d, and that was 20 over negative 5, um, or negative 4. So the solution set is negative 2, negative 4. So to me, that just seems like the longest way ever to solve two equations with two unknowns. Um, but you can see if you're programming a computer to, to do this math, um, it would be very easy programming because it's just this very repetitive, do this arithmetic and out will pop an answer. Okay, so then um, finding the determinant for a three by three matrix is way less fun than finding a determinant for a two by two matrix, um, but not nearly as bad as a four by four. Um, for a four by four, you end up having to do four of these, which is really painful. So for a three by three, um, there's a couple of ways to do it. And um, this one, I'm not even gonna try to describe looking at the formula because it's just, it's, um, yeah. So I'll just show this as an example and it'll make way more sense with numbers going on. Um, this one, let me try to explain. And this ends up being easier, um, honestly. This is the one you'll see in every book. I think there's stuff later where this doesn't work very well, but it works pretty good for what we're doing. Uh, that said, I would probably use this, but I would know how to do this. You'll see it with cross products next quarter in uh, trig. Um, so this, def this chunk of math definitely comes back. Um, so to do a determinant this way, we do, um, we're multiplying what's called cofactors, which are these letters out front by minors, which are um, these little two by two matrices. And so someone figured this out. I honestly do not know who. Um, but so to find a determinant, what we do is we go A, so that's gonna be my cofactor. I can go along any row, I can go along any column. I think the diagonals even work. Um, and we would get the exact same number. But so if I'm gonna use A, B, C as my, my cofactors as they did here, um, I would go A times, and what you do is you draw a line through these the row and the column A is in, and then what's left is the minor right there. And then there's this uh, sign array for cofactors. So it's the, um, remember how we went uh, thing minus thing on the two by two matrix? So that was just these first couple little bits of this. Um, for here, we're gonna do um, the, the signs alternate. And so when we hit the B, that's the same as the minus in the two by two. Um, for B, I draw like a T and I'd have D, G, F, I left, which is what you see here. And it goes back to plus for the cofactor. And so basically this means leave the sign alone and then the middle one means flip the sign. So if it was positive, it'd be negative. If it was negative, it'd be positive. Um, so then C, we draw um, kind of a L and then what's left is this corner and that's that minor. And then we do the little two by two, we make a number and multiply A by it. And then same thing here and same thing here. Um, so it's really involved. This one is, I don't know, maybe I'll try to explain it sort of. So you multiply down this, this diagonal and then you add, multiply down this diagonal and you multiply down that diagonal and you add those three. And then you multiply up the other way. So up the diagonal, up the diagonal, up the diagonal and then you subtract those three, which I would actually do as minus and then with parentheses and add them all first because that's easier um, than having that extra minus sign floating everywhere. Um, but it's the same math. So I'm basically gonna factor out the negative when I do it. And yeah, this one's better. Um, it's, it's, it's easier for sure. Um, but like I said, this one will come back. So best to know both. Um, so I'll do an example where I do one first the, this way and second that way. Okay, so first I'm going to use the um, minors and the cofactor version. So um, I'm going to find D of this. So this is going to be D, I'm um, sorry, D equals, and then one, so I'm expanding along the top row. If I think of drawing a line through there, I got negative one, six, three, three. 
And then um, this is always opposite whatever's there. So now it's going to be a minus 2 middle one. That's the only one you have to change the sign on. None, none of the other spots. And then that's going to make kind of the T. So that will be 3, 4, negative 6, and 3. And then um, <clears throat> this 2. So that goes back to a plus. And then 3, negative 1, 4, 3. Okay, so now we have it set up and we can do our math. Um, so D equals 1, and then we're doing these little 2 by 2s. So that would be negative 3 minus uh, negative 18. And then minus 2, 3 times 3 will be 9 minus negative 24 plus 2. And that's times 9 minus a negative 4. So um, then I have all that, and then I start cleaning that up. So I'll just leave this one here. Um, so that'll be negative 3 plus 18, so that will be 15. And then minus 2 times 9 minus negative 24 should be 33 plus 2, so a little parenthesis, and 9 minus negative 4 will be 13. So those are all the minors, and now we just multiply the cofactors. So we get D equals 15 minus 66 plus uh, 26, and that comes out to negative 25. So that's one version. Okay, and so here's a second version. So I'm just going to take this first and second row and repeat them right here. So this will go 1, 3, 4, and 2, negative 1, 3. And I'm just going to do my best to ignore that line. So what we do is we go down the, we multiply down the first row. So just like this. So we go 1 times negative 3, I'm sorry, 1 times negative 1 times 3. So that will be negative 3. And then we add to that whatever the same thing is down the second row. So we're going right down there. So that would be negative 12 times 4 would be negative 48. And then go down the third. I keep calling them rows, but I should say diagonal. Um, so 2 times 3 is 6 times 3 is 18. So then what I'm going to do, and like I said, I'm going to write it a little bit different so I don't have to go like all the signs. So I'm just going to go minus parenthesis and then do like I just did. And I'll add these up first. Um, actually, I'll probably distribute the sign, but um, then I'll just pretty much put it all in the calculator. So I'm going to go up this row. And so 4 times negative 1 times 2 would be a negative 8. And then add to that this diagonal. So that would be negative 18. And then this diagonal. Uh, 3, 3, 9, 18. And so then um, inside, that's cool, those cancel. So minus 18 plus 18. And so then I have, um, let's see, this would be, like I said, at this point I really should just put it in a calculator. Negative 51 plus 18 and minus that negative 8 plus 8. And that would be 2651. Yep, so negative 25 again, which is what it was supposed to come out. So that would be my D. Um, so yeah, this method is actually a lot easier. Um, so again, all I did was I just multiplied down the row, multiplied down this one, diagonal, sorry, multiplied down the third diagonal, and then minus, and then I'm just doing this the exact same way, and then just changing the sign. So up this diagonal, up this diagonal, up that diagonal. And um, it's a lot more compact than, than the other version. So the Kramer's rule uh, for 3 by 3 means we have to do four um, of those things we just did to do one problem. Um, and so it's, again, this kind of formal version with all the little subscripts. But basically, it's what we just saw. D is going to be cut off the equal side. Uh, DX, this would replace X. DY, this would replace Y. And DZ, this would replace Z. Um, and that's all in the notes if you want to see it with all the little subscripts. Okay, so if you have me, um, 
on an exam, I will never ask you to do all of Kramer's rule. And so what I do is um, use Kramer's rule to solve the system for Z only. So that cuts the problem in half, basically, and makes it not quite so obnoxious. Um, so let's do that. So we'll do, um, let's see, how about I'll do, um, I should do one each way. So uh, first off, I guess to solve for Z only, that means we're going to have to find D and then I'll have to find DZ where this replaces that. And so I think um, I think I will do D the uh, short way and I'll do DZ uh, the long way just to kind of give you one more example of both. Uh, so give me a second to get this set up. Okay, so for D we'll have um, so I just set this up where, so I've chopped off this column and then I'm replacing these two columns right here. So it goes X, Y, Z, X, Y. And then just multiplying down the columns, D is gonna be negative nine. And then two times two is four times six is negative uh, 24. And then that's gonna be two times five would be 10 times three would be 30. So I'll think of that as kind of the first one, and then we're going to subtract this next part. So 2, negative 1, 2 would be negative 4, and then 3 times 3 is 9, um, times 6 is 54, so plus negative 54, so I'm just writing it a little bit more compactly this time is 54. And then um, this one would be 10, 3, 30. And just cleaning that up, um, this would be negative 3, and then minus, um, this would be 58, 30, 28. And that'd be negative. So that's plus 28, so then that means D is 25. And then I'll do DX, or sorry, DZ, um, and I'm going to do that one out the matrix version. So DZ would be 3, 5, 2, 2, negative 1, 3. And then this replaces the Z column. So we're going to go 3 times its minor right here. And then minus 2, we do the T. So 5, 2, 3, 4. I always make a fraction bar, ignore that. And then um, 1, and there's that sign change, so if it had been a negative 2, this would be positive 2. If it's positive, it's negative. And again, this is the only spot that sign changes. Um, and then 1 times, cutting off those, I get 5, negative 1, 2, 3. So, um, we can expand this, so this will be 3, negative 4, minus 9, so here, minus here negative 2, and then 5 times 4 for 20, minus 2 times 3, 6, plus 1, 15, minus negative 2. So 3, negative 13, this would be a 14 in there, and that would be a 17. So negative 26, minus 28, plus 17, and so that hopefully is right. Let me double check myself. Oops, 39, 39. I was feeling like that, that was not coming out to 50. Um, so 39, 28, 17, there we go. And then add that up and you get negative 50. So here's our D and here's our DZ. Oops. And so then to finish it off and actually get Z, Z equals DZ over D, which is negative 50 over 25, also known as negative 2. Um, and so if I wanted X and Y, I could just go, you know, replace this for X and find DX, replace this for Y and find DY. Um, but like I said, on my tests, if you can do that, that's plenty. Um, and for me, I don't care which way you do it on the exam, um, but it is good to know both methods.